right, the, the purpose of this conversation today is be better than the book. Be better than the requirements. You gotta be better than whatever it is that you're seeing on the page. So for you guys watching on the camera, if you guys enroll in the online Ninjutsu Dojo, right, um, the requirements in the online dojo are the exact same that's in a physical dojo, whether you're here at the Hanbu or whether you're in one of our other schools. You are, you are graded and you're at this, going to be held to the same standard as any one of the students here. Now, you're going to be giving specific pages, and in this pages you kind of create your own din show and all this kind of stuff, and all the levels and all these pages you start putting in it. But anyway, as you go through it, you'll see that ninth Q, this is what you do for ninth Q, this is what you do for eighth Q, this is what you do for seventh Q, right? Okay. That, what you see is the bare minimum for that rank. Everyone can exceed a minimum, right? But we have to have something on paper that says what you have to do at a minimum to get the rank. That's what you gotta do, right? And that's what they call requirements. You are required to do the minimum. No one says these are the requirements you have to have to be, you know, the greatest of all time. No, <laughs> there, there's, there, you can't put a requirement on something that excels you to something beyond the best. You have a requirement when you want to get past a certain stage. These are your requirements to get out of high school. These are your requirements to get out of college. Now, you can get out of college and you get all D's, but you still get your degree because you pass your requirements with all D's. You didn't fail, right? That's what I mean by look at these like these are the requirements. Of course, yes, I want all my students to be great at everything we do and know all the kudin and know all the terms and of course, why not, right? But there's just a reality to it. Not everybody who trains in martial arts, like we are talking about earlier, not everyone who trains in martial arts wants to be a master. Sometimes people just want a hobby. Not everyone who trains in martial arts wants to be this you know, second, third, fourth, fifth dawn. They, they don't want that journey. They're like, I just want to get my black belt, I want to get a good workout, I want to learn some self-defense. Not everyone wants that, you know? And, and one thing I can say is, for me right now, I'm in my early 40s, and I would say the last, like, three to four years as an instructor is probably my biggest growth I've had in the last 20-some years, because I'm so obsessed with what I do for a living and what I do, uh, yeah, you know, ninjutsu and bujutsu that I just assume that, well, if they're coming to train with me, then they must have the same love I have. They must want the same thing I want. They must want to do the same things I do. And then, you know, after we went through this, you know, uh, if you guys haven't seen, the, uh, there's a video on there about maybe Journey of the Martial Arts. I don't know the name of it, but inside the video on YouTube, I talked about, you know, 2016 with this, 2017 was this, 2018 with this, 2019 was this. You know, that, that, that video, I forget the name of that video. But anyway, I went through those three or four years, and then it really hit me that not everyone wants to be that great. Most people don't want to be great. Most people just want to skim by at the bare fucking minimum. You know what I mean? So my, my thing to you guys is, I'm saying be better than that. If that's what you want, you know, you do you. But I'm saying, be better than what's in the book. You know what I mean? Now, a lot of times in the online dojo, this is what I get. So I'm gonna go back to you guys on the video camera. A lot of times in the online dojo, people will study popular martial arts, such as like Shotokan, Goju Ryu, Aikido, Taijutsu, uh, Karate, Kenpo, Judo, Jujutsu. They, there's popular martial arts. And they see some of the terms that we do, and then when they send me a review, whether it's Kamai, or Uke Waza, or Temi Waza, or Nage Waza, or Giriwaza or whatever, they'll do the technique exactly like that school did it. Like I've had people send me reviews and they'll do punches. And the way they do their punches is exactly how I say not to do the punch in the video. Like, I shit you not, like I can say this is Kazami, Yaku, Kagi, Ura, Urukanuch, Nukite, Mawashi, and I go through the whole thing and I can say, now this is the way we don't do it. This is the way some schools do it, and then I'll replicate a motion of what you would see in some other form of martial arts and I say we don't do it this way in our art this is why we do it this is why the masters before us wrote the art this way this is the weapons that they used was this the footwork that the footwear that they had was this and I go through the whole bit in the video in the online dojo I'm shitting you guys not and I know you guys are in the online dojo but I'm telling you like I go through it and I say so when you do these strikes you do them like this pop 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 and whether it's a punch a kick a throw a block or whatever I'm shitting you not, I will get at least two to three people a month will send me a review and it's, it's a technique that is absolutely not the way we do it. And then I have to have that conversation with them. 
Are you doing this because it's something you did in your previous martial art and you just think that I'm I'm some basic bitch that's gonna be like, you know, whatever it is that you wasn't, I mean, think about that. I, you're shaking your head no, but I mean, I mean, I'm thinking, you know me better than that. You really think, I mean, you really think, you guys watching this video, you, you're obviously leaving whatever it is that you're doing because you don't like it to come train with me. So if you're leaving that to train with me, why the fuck would you do that thinking I'm gonna give you some rank? Like where on the spectrum does that make any sense? You know what I mean? They have to be, I gotta be motivated to the point like you gotta learn this. You know what I mean? And, and I think that they're, I, I, they're, you know, the other day I told you guys I'm getting old. Do you know why I, I'm, I know that I'm old? Because there are three things that I absolutely stand for that nobody in the next generation or a couple generations or the majority of people, majority of uh, people below me just don't have. Honor, respect, and integrity. Like these little shits have zero fucking respect. You should hear it. I went to McDonald's up the road, my daughter wanted a freaking Big Mac. Right, or not Big Mac, a Happy Meal. My older daughter likes the Big Mac meal. But I got a Happy Meal for her, right? We go in there and she goes, I wanna go in, mama. So I said, all right, no problem. So get her out and she goes in there and me and Jill Juliana's in there and she's gonna get a Happy Meal. You know, why not? And there's this little kid. I mean, I'm saying, see, Juliana's four. So this kid must have been like eight, give or take. And he is reading me his dad. Like, the dad. And the dad was allowing him to just talk massive shit. You know what I mean? And, and I'm not gonna repeat the shit that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because if I do, there's uh, there's that part of me where I feel like maybe the people on the, on the online program, maybe you allow your kids to talk to you the way that this little shit was talking to his dad. But let me tell you, if my daughter talked to me like that, oh, I don't hide it. Spank her the last. Get in the car. You ain't getting a Happy Meal. You, you, you just don't talk like that. You don't show that. Then you're being disrespectful. I don't beat my kids. You know what I mean? But I do discipline my kids. Hell, you're my kids. I don't beat you. You signed the waiver. I just discipline you. There's a difference. <laughs> do you catch what I was saying? <laughs> so it's like, but I saw that and I'm like, God damn, I'm even you know. Because the, the, it's like martial arts. Everyone's like, they get their little phone. Like, here's my phone. Everyone's like, oh, I want to learn whatever. I want to learn martial arts. So they get on there and like, oh, let's see how to do whatever. You can learn anything on this. Like, everyone gets their phone and they flip through this some bitch and they're doing this and they're doing this. And they, they, we live in an age where everyone has all this knowledge and they know everything. We literally live in an age of know-it-alls that talk shit, that have the biggest bullshit game, that 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 that. that, that they should talk people, they have all it, but they can't do anything. And this whole, these generation of the people below me, I know a couple of you guys are, you know, much younger than me, and obviously you guys are above that standard because <laughs> you've been there long enough. But I'm talking like, every one of these places I go, my normal run, Target, Walmart, McDonald's, Sonic, uh, Wendy's, we eat at Wendy's a lot, I have to admit, I. I should own stock in Wendy's with the amount of money that I spend at Wendy's. I love their chili. Um, where else do we go a lot? It, all these places we go, the, all these signs say help wanted. They have right on there, it says help wanted. Didn't log on to this and apply for a job. And then all these kids that I know, let's say 25 and back, right? 18 to 25, 18, 26. They're all looking for jobs. And everywhere I go, it says help fucking wanted. And all these places that I go to, Walmart, Target, McDonald's, Sonic, you know. Everyone that works there is over the age of 26, 27. They're all late 20s, early 30s, 40s, 50s. And all these kids can't find a goddamn job. What it is, they don't want to fucking work. They're lazy. They're expecting, they're expecting greatness at 21. You know what I'm saying? That's what they want. Now you guys are gonna wonder why am I doing this when you guys are getting ready. We need to get this stuff ready so you guys can be prepared for your black belt test tomorrow. Because I want you to tell you guys right now, black belt isn't greatness. You're not great because you're a black belt. Black belt is a great thing. And every martial artist wants the opportunity to test for a black belt. A black belt means the first level black belt is shodan, which means initial level. You're an initial level student. You finally get a, if you're gonna get a big certificate, I'm gonna sign it all up and you guys are gonna have a black belt and you're gonna be a, a legitimate, recognized student 
of the organization. Not a Q rank, not a scrub, like a legitimate black belt student. And that in itself is a major thing. That's a great accomplishment. But it literally is the beginning. Like if you guys can remember back when you are in high school, everyone wants to graduate high school because once you graduate high school, it's like that first step of becoming an adult. It is a great thing to graduate high school. You know what I mean? You get a high school diploma. And then you either go to college, you get a job, you go to trade school or whatever it is you want to do, right? But that's that start of, I've got my high school diploma, and now I'm going to go do whatever it is that you're going to do. It's kind of like black belt. It's, it's that. It, it's the, it is equivalent to that high school diploma in that sense. You know a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And you know the basics. You are efficient at the basics. Uh, in our school, and I can't speak for other schools, but in our school, once you become a black belt, that's when you really start working off the scrolls and details of the scrolls and all that kind of stuff. Everything under black belt is all the skills needed to be able to understand the scrolls. You know, the punching, the kicking, the fighting, the weapons, and so that I'm giving an example for the camera. You guys know what's under black belt, obviously. But the, um, the, uh, at this point though, you guys have to make that decision. What are you going to do with it? You're just going to be a black belt and then, you know, a couple weeks from now, come to the Dicomio side. A couple weeks later, say I gotta take some time off, you know, blah, blah, blah. A couple weeks later, mm, don't hear from me anymore. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Which, if that's your thing, that's your thing. I'm not, if you guys are already planning that as an exit strategy, that's fine. <laughs> you guys are laughing at me. <laughs> I'm trying to guilt my goddamn students here, you know? Not really trying to guilt my students. But, no, yeah, right, to turn the fucking thing. But I am saying that, what are you gonna do with it? Because, there's lots of times I ask basic questions that aren't in the book, and I expect you guys to know it. And if you guys can't be better than the book now, you're not going to do very well in, the, in this Nidon and Samadon and Yamdon. You're just simply not. You know what I mean? Earlier I was talking to uh, one of my students here has also has two daughters. And, uh, both of them are out of school now, right? Yep. Yeah. So you've, you've already parented your kids to now they're legal adults which now means you have a whole new problem in front of you, right? Mine are still under the age of 18, so I still, you know, I have more control over them, I guess, right? But um, anyway, my point with that is, you know, you don't learn how to be a parent from a book. We can all look at, you know, you can buy parenting books. I mean, I guarantee you, you go up the road to the bookstore, Parenting 101, Parenting for Dummies, right? Here's how you make a bottle, here's how you change a diaper, here's how you, right? And then, and you know that's horseshit, right? But by now, I mean, you have a son. How old's your son? Three. Three. How, out of everything you've known for the last three years with your son, how much of that book is actually accurate? Not very much. It gives, it, it kind of gives you a piece of picture. You know what I'm saying? But it's just not, it's just not. You know what I'm saying? So, this is like, these are the basics. When you're going, okay, ninth cue. This is this. Eighth cube. This is this. Seventh cube. This is this. These are the basics. This is the outline of what you need to do to get there. But you got to be more than the book. You got to be better than the book because if you parented only at the level of parenting for dummies, your kid's going to be a statistic. I promise. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? I mean, it's just that's the way it is. It doesn't matter whether it's parenting or raising. Uh, animals or, or dating or being a husband or being a wife or being a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a partner or whatever it is you're going to do with yourself. If you only go by whatever book it is you're reading, you're just not going to be that good. Do you know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. So when you guys are going through these levels, be better than what's on here. Know more than what's on here. That's so you catch what I'm saying. Now here's my example and I'm going to end the video with this. Why am I talking about this black belts in the room, or hopefully black belts in the room, soon to be black belts? One is because we're going in, they're getting ready to, if, if you guys pass your exam in the next couple days coming up, you guys are going to get into a level where I'm going to expect you to understand and know a lot of information. We're going to be looking into the scrolls. You're going to get into the deeper secrets of training and taijutsu and kata and all those things behind that. And it's not going to be as easy as one, two, three. You know, it's just a different aspect of training. And the reason I'm bringing this up is a couple weeks ago, this guy gets on Facebook and I made a video, um, I made a video on my Instagram and it was just me doing some basics, punches, kicks, blocks, whatever it was, right? 
And he gets on my, and I shared, you know, you could share your video from Instagram to Facebook or something like that. Anyway, I shared it over and he gets on there and he says like, oh, this makes me want to, uh, maybe I should get back into training with you. And what I, th what, what I thought about that, and I know what he meant by this is, when I teach the lesson, okay, for you guys out there, so if you guys are students here, online students, uh, Kudin page, whatever. Let's look at ninth Q. You guys have basic blocks, right? Ba basic blocks and all this kind of stuff. On your lesson, you're gonna learn them as a block set, right? But you have to be able to grow from that. So my students, if I, if I have students that only come to class, they don't ever come to events, they don't ever come to the workshops, they don't ever come to the seminars, they don't ever come to the tie guys, they're not gonna get a very deep understanding of those blocks simply because they're only gonna know the blocks off the page and then whatever few drills that we do in class. They're not gonna get a deeper understanding of that. However, if they do come to the seminars and the workshops and all that stuff, you guys get to say, oh, well, that's how those blocks work and these blocks are different from these blocks and da 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 da, right? Same thing with like, uh, I think it's level four. We go to, uh, I think it's six Q blue belt and now we start to have a, we have a page of Tonto Jutsu techniques. I think that's right, right, six Q. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, same thing. It's like, you know, we start working knife stuff and it's like, okay, well, what's this, what's this, what's this? And they only know what's on the page. They don't know anything that's off the page because they don't come to the knife fighting stuff or the, 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 the firearm stuff or the edge weapon training and they, they don't do that. They just do the page, you know what I mean? And if that is that, you're limiting yourself to training. Now, sometimes you guys just can't come. You guys work and I understand that. You gotta pay the bills, you gotta take care of your kids. I get that and that's where all those other those are the things that I do is a good resource for you. I have six books, buy the fucking books. I've got over 50 DVDs. If you miss the event, buy the fucking DVD. Get the information, the information can still be there. Now, generally speaking, for you guys on YouTube, I do share the Kuden lessons from the workshops and the Taikais and that sort of thing. I usually share those lessons, the majority of them, not all, but the majority of those on YouTube because I want the world to see my philosophical the way that I teach martial arts, right? But the techniques that we do at the seminars and workshops and all that, I don't generally put those on YouTube. You know, we, I do the techniques we do in the dojo, I put on YouTube in here, uh, or that we do in, in, in those that, that arena, but the techniques we do at certain workshops for DVDs, I don't. Because I want people who are gonna buy the DVDs to get information and get techniques that you wouldn't get if you were on YouTube. Uh, does that make sense? Okay, so, my point with that is you have to be better than what's on here. The individual on Facebook says, oh, I think I would really love to be able to, uh, maybe I should second guess my question. And, and I started thinking about that. That's why we we're on this, by the way. So, so that's the video, right? That's, that's I post just a quick little snippet of me doing jabs and no footwork and mayosh, ushiro ash, jab, ba basic stuff. The, everything that's in that video is ninth cube, level one. Now, does it look like that on the level one video? No. It doesn't. It looks like, okay, here's the Nkutsudach, here's the jab, here's the cross. Why do I teach like that on level one? Because the majority of people that come in never trained in martial arts before. But the people who only say, well, I learned level one, I don't need to do it anymore, will never look like that. All I was doing was level one technique. You have to grow, every level has to get better. And when someone like says, oh, well, the way you're moving isn't the way that I saw you in the video, well, then you missed the point of the training. Because the point of the training is to be as efficient as you can in combat. And the arts that we're doing were meant for war. So if you guys on the camera here, if you've only signed up for level one and you do level one and then you're like, oh, this is kind of boring, well then you've got a really false representation of what it is that we do because you can't base anything off of level one. The program's designed for people that's never done martial arts to progress through the levels, right? And for you guys, now that you guys have everything through up to Shodan, be better. Be better than the page.